Thanks to Apple's game porting toolkit, we're gonna try some games. 11 FPS! Uh... Performance obviously sucks. Hey Linus, this is Andrew Tsai, and I've been playing around with game porting toolkit quite a lot over the last few days. And if you're only getting 10 FPS at 1080p on an M1 Ultra, then I think you should have spent a little bit more time researching on what game porting toolkit is actually capable of. So if you didn't already know, Apple announced the game porting toolkit, a set of tools for developers to help them to port their games over from Windows to macOS. This includes things like advanced debugging tools, software that will convert your DirectX shaders into Apple's own metal shaders, and they also include what Apple call an emulator, which is actually a Windows game translation layer, which is intended to help developers port their game over to native macOS. But in reality, it's being used by Mac gamers right now to get some of their favorite DirectX 11 and 12 games working on their Apple Silicon Macs for the very first time. Now, of course, this is a developer beta tool, Compatibility can be quite patchy, and these games are running through several translation layers, including x86 to ARM64, Windows to macOS, and DirectX 12 to Metal 3. So it's a wonder that we're getting any performance at all, and it's kind of nuts that some games will run at 4K 60fps. But if you're a YouTuber that's basically saying that the best that Apple can do is run Cyberpunk at 10 FPS, then you're doing the game porting toolkit a little bit of a disservice. Now this isn't all LTT's fault. They're testing on the M1 Ultra, which at the time of recording was the most powerful Mac chip at the time, and in theory should have been the best way to show off these games. However, I've been trying to run some games through the M2 Ultra, and it looks like there's some serious performance degradation. For example, I've been testing games like Elden Ring, Hogwarts Legacy, and these games perform far worse worse on the M2 Ultra than they did on my M1 Max and even on my base M1 MacBook Air. So the current theory is that this has something to do with the Ultra chip's unique design of fusing two Max chips together into a single die and for some reason this isn't correctly supported by Game Porting Toolkit. And I wish the team at LTT had a little bit more time and if they had done testing on literally any other Mac chip they would have seen huge differences in performance and gotten games like Hellblade, Senua Sacrifice and Crisis Remastered working at 4K 60 frames per second. However I understand that for big YouTube channels there isn't always time to do the full research. And you might make a few basic mistakes like confusing GPU time with GPU percentage usage, information that's actually found inside the official Apple video, and you might be forgiven because you're using a Google Sheet for reference. If you'd been looking at the Apple Gaming Wiki website you'd find a lot more compatible games for you to test, and you'd probably also figure out how to track a game's performance on Mac by turning on the Metal HUD frame rate graph. So my point is that the Game Porting Toolkit's translation layer is not just a curiosity as Linus says, it has unlocked a whole new world of gaming for Apple Silicon Macs, giving us access to current AAA game releases. Now I love watching Linus tech tips, but I think even they themselves admit that there's a lot of performance left on the table in their test, and they'll be creating a follow-up video, which I hope is going to integrate a little bit more research and testing, because if a big YouTuber can only get a 2D indie title working at full speed on the most expensive Mac that you can buy, then it makes it look like Apple Silicon hardware is weak, and it kind of does the opposite of what Game Porting Toolkit intended to do, which is to encourage more developers to come and bring more games to the Mac. If you want to find out how to get Game Porting Toolkit working on your own Mac, make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki website or my tutorial video on the topic. And make sure to subscribe if you want to find out more about gaming on the Mac. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.